Thanks for coming to the session, What's New with Palm 2? My name is Louis Liu, Product Manager for Palm API at Google Cloud. So today, I'm going to share some exciting product updates and help you to reimagine what's possible on Vertex AI. Later in the session, Peng Long Lin, Google Developer Advocate, going to give you a good demo about uh, grounding and also on a new project that we just started, things that you haven't uh, seen from our uh, Spotlight sessions and keynotes. We're also so thrilled to have Gautam Sabara, VP of Product Management at Verkiva, and Adam Smith, Director of Strategic Partnership at Jasper AI, joining us on the stage to talk about their journey with Palm API. But first, let me walk you through a brief introduction on large language model and Palm 2. What are large language model, or LLMs? Traditional natural language processing and models are trained to solve a specific task. Say, for example, you want to train a news classification model, you want to gather, say, 2,000 training examples of the news article and associated category. With large language model, however, you can simply ask the model, hey, what is the news article is about? That sounds very magical, right? Because it has great capability on zero shot and few shot. Meaning, you don't have to train the model with thousands of examples anymore. In fact, these models are already trained with a lot, a lot of data across many sources, billions of data points. That's the reason the model can generalize a lot of capability in one single artifact. Google has been a pioneer in this space. In 2017, we published paper, Attention is All You Need. This groundbreaking work in transformer and diffusion model are the basis for almost all generated AI applications you see today. In 2018, we published the model BERT. Looking from today, this is still one of the most often used model in natural language understanding. Fast forward to 2023, we launched Palm 2 at Google I.O., our next generation state-of-art large language model. You may wonder what does Palm stands for? Palm is short for Pathway Language Model. It is Google's vision to create a single model that could not only generalize across tasks, but also domains, and at the same time, being highly, highly efficient. Through the Palm API, we give you direct access to the underlying model so that you don't have to worry about scaling up or scaling down. It's fully managed service. It ends to also unblock multilingual capability, reasoning, and coding task. So under Palm, we have two main offerings, a Palm API for te uh, text and Palm API for chat. For text, it's a fine-tuned model that is great at both generative and non-generative tasks, such as classification, entity destruction, summarization, content generation, and editing. For chat, it is a multi-turn interface that helps you to track the history and the context as you conduct these conversations. We launched these two models into GA two months ago, and we have seen a lot of developers and companies building great applications on top of the model and our platform. This change actually apply to all the industries and all the customers. So last time when I see a technology with such a wide capability is probably the internet. So that's why we believe this is a pivotal point in technology where things are not possible four or five years ago become a reality today. We at Google feel so fortunate and also very excited to work with developers customers, partners closely to have the opportunity to innovate together in this space. Enterprise readiness, it is our core to approach generative AI. Customers have full control of the data, so you have enterprise-grade capability such as data prevention, data loss prevention, um, data isolation, 
data um, compliance as well. Google is also the first company to publish AI principle that governs how we build AI products and how we bring this technology to the market. We have a series of updates in this space that we'd like to share with you in a minute. We also have a dedicated session about our architectural design, security architecture, our approach to adaptation tuning in, in much, much more details. So if that is of interest to you, I highly recommend you join that session or watch the replay. Now, without further ado, let me roll out all the new features. First and foremost, the models. We're introducing four new models into the latest channel. By latest, I mean you can call these models for prediction without specifying a version ID. In our early testing and early customer feedback, we see great improvement on the new four models across all tasks. We also added 32K long tail context window to the model. So if you process a long financial documents, contracts, or you want to process like a transcription of a you know, podcast, you don't have to chunk the input anymore. And in addition to that, we also uh, added the support for additional 30A languages into GA and over 90 languages into public preview. Our improved safety filter will protect the use of Palm 2 across all the models and all the languages. One more thing I want to call out, we also have a recitation checker so that we would detect any overlap between the model output and the well-known sources. Second, we're trying to make our platform even easier to use. We added a streaming feature, now supporting text, chat, and call models. With a count token API, you can count the number of tokens and billable characters before calling into our prediction endpoint. We added two more model parameters, stop tokens and number of samples, so you have more control of the model output and you can get more out of one single request. If you're running a non-time sensitive job, so if you process a product catalog of a million, or you want to run a summarization job of a call center overnight, batch prediction is the way to go. We can support up to 100,000 prompts in one single request. And then we have a plan to expand this to 1 million prompts. Through my conversation with customers and early testers, we know tuning is a critical capability. It helps the model to perform a lot better on specific tasks and specific prompts without retraining the entire base model. Today, we are launching tuning for text model in GA and tuning for chat model in public preview. We have seen great results from early testing with customer with as few as 100 examples. And I cannot wait to see what type of the new applications and new experiences that you can create on top of the tuning capability. Many of us know one of the secret sauce that we see the large language model keep improving is through reinforcement learning with human feedback. At Google Cloud, we will not use your data to improve Google Foundational Model. Your data is your data. However, we are trying to make this fantastic framework available to you so you can deploy it to the right use case with the right audience within or outside your organization. Generate AI Studio. That has been the testing ground for a lot of you to experiment and evaluate our models. Now, we are making it even easier to prototype across the entire model lineup with all the new parameters. All the changes that we talk about today is already live by now. So I hope you have a lot of fun playing with this after this session. As I mentioned earlier, enterprise readiness is the, at the core of our approach to generate AI. Today, we are announced our Palm API to support additional security features, such as data residency at rest, virtual private cloud service control, and um, customer encryption key, et cetera. And with this enterprise readiness feature, 
We want you to feel 100% confident that you can run the most critical business workload on Palm API and Vertex AI. For more, you can check out our documentation page. From Thomas' keynote, you might hear grounding multiple times. We see grounding as a key element of our product experience. And we know this from a lot of a customer like you. Hallucination is one of the top concerns. So we created enterprise grounding service that works across Vertex AI uh, foundational models, search, and conversation. So the support for Palm API is now in private preview. Another cool feature I want to share is called Extended Context API. So it is our vision to support a limited context window. So as a developer, you don't have to worry about how to chunk the input. And as a modeler, you don't have to worry about the quality degradation as the size of the window increase. We are testing this with a few customers, and we see great results. So this feature and the grounding feature are still in private, but don't worry, Hong Lin is going to show you some live demo about this. Last but not least, with the new models, we are also introducing new pricing. Building on top of Google Advanced TPU and GPU infrastructure, we are constantly pushing the boundary of efficiency optimizations. Today, we are announcing a 50% product uh, price reduction on our online prediction call. So if you compare it with competitors at the same price point, you get double size of the context window. If you're running a non-time sensitive job on batch, you can further benefit from our optimization with another 20% cheaper. We are rolling out this new pricing starting early September. And I hope with the new pricing, it can unlock a lot of new use cases that people have never imagined before. And these are all, all the new updates we bring to the Palm API. Now I will pass it to Peng Lung to show you some live demo. Hello, everyone. My name is Paul Long Lin, and I'm a developer advocate at Google Cloud. And my focus is on generative AI. So I'm going to be talking about two demos here uh, that Lewis has mentioned, one on grounding with enterprise search, and the second one on Q&A with extended context API. And I'm so excited to show these two demos, I think, for the first time publicly. OK, so let's get started. Now, with the grounding, uh, so grounding with LLMs uh, attempts to solve two problems, as, as you may know. Uh, grounding solves the problem of uh, so allowing the LLM to access uh, enterprise or proprietary or internal documents. So that's one. And the second one is attempting to mitigate hallucinations by grounding uh, with your uh, proprietary or internal documents or, or data. So I'm going to show you an example of here with grounding with enterprise search. Now, you can build your own grounding applications uh, on, from scratch on your own. But I'm going to show you how you can create this uh, in minutes uh, using grounding with enterprise search. And this is uh, a fantastic tool on, on Google Cloud. So imagine that uh, you, know, you are a, an employee of this fictitious company called Symbol Bank. In Symbol Bank, um, there's lots of new employees that are being onboarded all the time to Symbol Bank. And so there's a number of different sort of onboarding related documents that's specific to Symbol Bank. Now, again, this is all fictitious information. Uh, these are just PDFs that I have actually just uploaded to Google Cloud Storage. Now, there's information here specific to Symbol Bank, this fictitious company, around how to book travel using tools like Symbol Fly, Symbol Stay to book your hotel. Uh, it's authored by Louis Symbol, who is the founder and CEO of this fictitious company. So now that we have all these PDFs in Google Cloud Storage, the question becomes, how do we ground our large language model? How do we ground Palm? so that we can ask Palm questions based off of the, the content of these PDFs. So let's walk through that example um, with enterprise search. So I'm going to go through the example of how to build that app, that search app, with enterprise search here. So I can click on new app here under uh, Gen App Builder, Gen App Builder, and I'm clicking here on new app. And I'm going to give this app a name. Let this load here a little bit. 
So there's different apps that you can create with Gen App Builder, but here I'm choosing search because we want to create a search on top of the PDFs that we have in cloud storage. And I'll set the, the parameters here to be default, but I'll give it a name, like symbol M for employee, and then give it a location here to be the US, and then I'll click here, continue. And now at this point, I'm going to be creating a data store. So what exactly is this data store? This is where I'll be importing the data from that cloud storage bucket with those PDFs about Symbol Bank. So I can choose from other sources as well, from website URLs, from data in BigQuery as well. I can choose from cloud storage, my PDFs, my docs, my text files. I can even import data from an API as well. But in this case, because my PDFs are in cloud storage, I'll click on cloud storage. And I'll point to that folder where I had previously uploaded all of the PDF files here. So it'll load here just in a second. Symbol employee onboarding is my bucket. I'll select that and I'll go ahead and click on continue. And I can give my data store a, a name, data store symbol and click create. Now I've actually created this app already here because it takes a couple of minutes to import these files. So I've created this app already here called symbol employee onboard. And as you see below here, I've actually now imported these five PDFs into my search app using Enterprise Search. So I could ask some fairly basic questions directly within Enterprise Search under this preview button here. And I could ask some questions like, hmm, who is the CEO of uh, Symbol Bank again? Let me try that. Who is the CEO of Symbol Bank? And I think, uh, you know, Palm API would not know the answer to this because this, this information is locked away in the PDFs. And it will say, ah, Lewis Symbol is a CEO. And it will also provide citations of the PDFs where it's gotten this information from as well. So this is great for trivia related sort of questions uh, based off of the knowledge within this content. But then what if I want to shape this prompt to be a little bit more fluid, to be a bit more creative with my prompt? If I want to try different things like write emails and generate emails uh, about some of these tools in Symbol Bank or something like that. So let's move over to uh, Generative AI Studio with the Palm API. And I'll ask a question like, generate an email to remind employees to use internal tools for biz travel. And I'm not mentioning Symbol Bank here in this prompt here at all, right? So I can, first of all, disable enable grounding, click on submit, and I'll get a response that's going to be very generic. Because again, the Palm API doesn't know this information from Symbol Bank, so it gives a very generic response. You know, hi, you know, dear employees, I hope this email finds you well. And then it has nothing to do with Symbol Bank. But here is a little toggle button, as you saw earlier, right? Enable grounding. Enable grounding with source enterprise search. And what I've done here is I've added in the data store where we've imported those PDFs into here. And I've clicked save here, and I'll just uh, enable grounding. And if I ask the same question, hopefully it will return an email that's specific. Oh, I think you need to do it once more. Enable it, click submit, and it'll give me an email specific to Symbol Bank, and it's going to be related to Symbol Bank here. Oh, I might need to change this prompt a little bit for uh, internal tools for Symbol Bank, and then it should give us a response related to Symbol Drive, Symbol Stay, and Symbol Travel here. Symbol Fly, Symbol Expense, Symbol Work, these are all specific tools uh, found in those documents, and now this response from the Palm API is indeed grounded using our enterprise search app. So here we go. There's a fantastic way to ground your app in just minutes without having to set up your own uh, vector database, worry about embeddings, worry about chunking. Um, you can just point and click, point to your, your data in BigQuery, your API, uh, cloud storage, and then ground your prompts so that you can get responses grounded based off of your own internal and proprietary data. So this is grounding with enterprise search. Okay, and this is the first demo, but I'm going to actually go to it, uh, another demo here as well, and I'll go through some of these screenshots. Okay, so this here is a very, very long document. Now imagine that you are a company, you're not quite ready to build a whole search engine on, on, your, on, on your proprietary data. You may have some very long form documents here. So here is the SEC filing for Google about its expenditure with the Security and Securities and Exchange Commission, the SEC, or the 10K form, right? This is how Google spent its money, uh, I believe, in 2004. And it's a, very, it's a very long document, right? I'm scrolling here. I'm not even halfway through. It's a very long document. So as you saw earlier, 
uh, Text Bison now can support up to 32,000 uh, tokens. Uh, previously, it was at 8,000 tokens. And this here is over 100,000 tokens. It's a very, very long document. So how can we ask questions about this document as quickly and as easily as possible? Well, we can use uh, the extended context API. Right? And this is a, an experimental. So I'm going to be running this live here. I'm going to be importing uh, the text bison uh, SDK here. And I'm going to be asking the question, what were Google's R&D expenses in 2004? And it's going to find this answer uh, within the document. I'm going to run this now here live for you. What, how much were Google's R&D expenses in 2004? I'm passing in the file path to that particular text file with the prompt. And within 7.07 seconds, it gives us the paragraphs most related to the question. Most related to the question. Now, this is not passing it to the Palm API yet, right? So these are three to four paragraphs of the most relevant sort of context from within the original file. So then I can take these three to four paragraphs and then combine this context with my original question and ask the Palm API. So if I run this again here with this three to four paragraphs as the context, and ask, and it'll say Google's R&D expenses in 2004 were 225.6 million. Now, was that correct? Because I have a bit of a trust-distrust relationship with LLMs. You just kind of want to validate everything here. And if I, if I look here, ah, indeed, it says here, research and development expenses increased by 134.4 million to 225.6 million. OK, let's go back to the original document here from the SEC filing and search for it. And it is actually from there. So it's getting that factual, grounded information from the original filing. But this document is only over just over 100,000 tokens. What if we use one of the largest, uh, one of the largest books that have ever been uh, written, War and Peace, um, 792,000 tokens. And what if we were to ask a very sort of almost specific question? What did Mason say after Pierre said something about human intelligence? All right, so Mason and Pierre are two characters in War and Peace. And you'll notice here, and I'm going to actually start running this, because this will take a little bit of time here. Human intelligence. All right, human intelligence. If I go back to this, the actual file itself. So this is the War and Peace file from Project Gutenberg. And I can scroll down all the way through. And this is a massive, massive text file, 792,000 tokens. And if I actually look for the term human intelligence, it's actually nowhere to be found in this text file. It's got human, so I can see there's different instances of human being said, intelligence being said here, but human intelligence is not a phrase that ever appears in this War and Peace book. So uh, here I'm, I'm running, what did Mason say after, and also with an intentional typo, after uh, Pierre said something about human intelligence, and here I pass in warandpeace.txt, which is that same file, and this will take approximately from calling it to the end around 55 seconds, and we'll see here just a little bit, 55.39 seconds, and it gives us this answer uh, incredibly, three to four paragraphs, and it found this probably in shorter time than it would be for me to scroll through the entire book of War and Peace. So then I can pass this to the Palm API, and I'll say, given the following information from the book War and Peace as context below, answer, answer the user question. So I'll pass this to the Palm API, and what will it say? It'll say, the Mason said that the highest wisdom and truth are like the purest liquid we may wish to imbibe, or to drink, to, to, to drink, the purest liquid to wish to, to drink. So if I were to copy this uh, interesting phrase, purest liquid, and I do a search here again, and it says, ah, okay. So I, indeed, Pierre is talking to, to Mason, uh, and then so it says something, the Mason smiled with his gentle, farly smile, the purest liquid which we may wish to imbibe. So if I were to copy, copy that little phrase, go back to War and Peace. Is this War and Peace? No, this is War and Peace. And I look for it, and it's, it's really directly from the original book itself. So we've done this sort of like searching for a needle in a haystack. But in fact, we, we, we asked for this question, right? What did Mason say after Pierre said something about human intelligence? This phrase didn't appear at all in the original book. So it's almost like we're searching for something that looks like a needle in the haystack, and it's able to retrieve that within a minute across almost 800,000 tokens, which is honestly quite incredible. Um, so you might also wonder, what if Palm already knew the answer without the context, right? So maybe Palm already knows this answer. 
So if we were to ask Palm directly without the context, it'll give a completely different response. It says Mason said that human intelligence is a product of evolution and so on. And again, also if we were to scroll back up to the SEC question, did the uh, Palm API already know Google's R&D expenses in 2004? If we were to ask that question to Palm API, oh, that's the, the cached one. Let me go back up here to the original one and then uh, call this over here again. Uh, it's gonna say something like uh, one, one billion or something completely inaccurate because it was not grounded, right? So 1.1 billion is what Palm API thinks Google's R&D expenses were in 2004, but that's not grounded because it doesn't have that context from the SEC filing. So that is the end of uh, these, two, uh, these two demos. Um, so I'm gonna pass this over to our next speaker, Gautam. And uh, so thank you so much for these demos. Hi everyone, I'm uh, Gautam Subarao. I lead product management for machine learning at Workiva. That was an exciting set of announcements and what I'm gonna be doing here for the next few minutes is showing you all of that in a real world application uh, and how we're approaching generative AI at, uh, at Workiva. But before I go dive into how are we leveraging Palm and v Vertex AI, I wanna spend a little bit of time giving you a little bit of uh, uh, information about what is Workiva, who are we and what do we do, right? Workiva is the only unified platform for assured integrated reporting. We are purpose-built for financial reporting, environmental, social, and governance, or ESG reporting. And then the third one is governance, risk, and compliance, or GRC reporting. You remember the example that Paul Long showed about uh, SEC filings? That is just one of the many things that we help our customers manage on our platform. Right, so at, at, the, the other thing I wanna highlight is we help our customers bring together their people, processes, and their data in a secure, controlled, and most importantly, in an audit-ready environment. Oops, sorry, wrong direction. Um, to tell you a little bit more about our user base, we serve about 5,800 customers, uh, 230,000 platform users in 17 different countries around the world. In fact, 85% uh, of Fortune 500 companies are Workiva's customers. Right? And we serve a very, very broad set of industries that range from banking, energy, uh, media and entertainment, pharma, automotive, just to name a few uh, there. So before I go into why are we interested in generative AI and what are we doing about it, let me share a glimpse of what our customers' challenges are and why is this relevant for our particular industry. Right? Productivity is top of mind for a lot of CFOs today. And that's driven by four, four major trends, uh, macro trends that are in play here. The first one is there's actually increased demand for transparency from uh, the stakeholders of our customers. Right? And this is happening in an environment where there's increased regulation, where the volume and variety of data that our customers have to report on is exploding. And then on top of it, there's an acute shortage of accounting and finance professionals. Right? So this makes it really hard to get productivity gains in an environment like this. And this is also the reason why over 70% of uh, the CFOs are looking at emerging AI technologies such as generative AI to be adopted in their finance functions within the next 12 months. Right? So at Workiva, we believe we have an opportunity to not just transform, but to revolutionize business reporting. Right? And I'm gonna introduce our generative AI approach here by showing you a quick video on how we're going about this. Let's play the video here. Do you have the audio? So what is it exactly? It's a secure generative AI productivity partner designed to help you by creating and improving content, summarizing your hard work, and fast-tracking your decision-making process. But how does it do all that? The new generative AI experience can be leveraged within Workiva documents, spreadsheets, and presentations, plus via chat across the entire Workiva platform. Let's say you need help creating a remediation template for an accounts payable control failure. Simply drop a command into the prompt box. From here, you can edit your starting content by choosing to shorten, elaborate, rephrase, create headlines, and more. When you're happy with the output, click copy or insert and the feature will place the content into whatever you're working on, supercharging your efficiency and productivity. You can also leverage generative AI in chat as a quick way to research and brainstorm. Simply click on the AI chat icon in the lower right corner to get started. Let's say you're looking to create a stakeholder engagement plan for your ESG program, but you're not really sure where to start. 
you can just ask about it in the chat. Once again, you have the ability to further refine the information generated based on your requirements. When it's ready, copy and paste the content, all without interrupting your workflow or sharing information externally. You can also highlight the content you're working on. Right-click and hover over the generative AI in the menu. There, you'll see a number of helpful options. Choose the option that fits your needs. In this case, we'll try to elaborate. This gives you even more content to work with, and in a matter of seconds, the new stakeholder engagement plan is taking shape. Our generative AI experience provides the same level of security and assurance that Workiva is known for. You can feel confident knowing that your data and prompts are not used to train the model. Inputs and responses from generative AI are encrypted and not stored beyond the chat session. Whew, now that's a relief. All right. So let's spend a little bit of time unpacking this. Um, I'll share with you our approach and how we've tackled this problem of uh, incorporating generative AI onto our platform, right? So let's start with an example here. Uh, as soon as a user puts in a prompt into our generative AI experience, the very first thing we do is we actually run a filter. We run a filter to eliminate any off-limit prompts that a user might be asking, right? So that's the very first step. Right after that, we apply a set of guardrails. Guardrails can be in the form of additional context, uh, where in the application is a user, what are they trying to do, and also persona types in terms of uh, what's the, the persona or the intent of the user. So that helps anchor responses uh, that you can get with generative AI. The third thing, you heard uh, Lewis and Polong talk about grounding, right? So we do grounding in a couple of different ways. Uh, the first thing is we actually leverage uh, embeddings uh, and then retrieval augmented generation, not just on Workiva's proprietary data, but we can also do the same thing for uh, our customers' workspace data so that they can get context-specific information on their own documents. Right? We also do this in the form of templates so that if a customer wants responses in a specific templatized form, that's also possible uh, using the, the grounding uh, function. Uh, IAM authorization, this is one that comes up quite often uh, with our customers in terms of are we serving responses that somebody is not authorized to see. That is the reason why even in the grounding phase we look at IAM authorization and just just to make sure that only users who are allowed to look at specific documents are able to generate responses from that particular document or even sections of that document, right? And the final thing is citations and references, right? RAG is a very efficient technique in terms of us being able to not just anchor our responses in our documents, but to also serve citations to our customers to see where did these responses come from, especially if it's coming from either our proprietary data or their own uh, data. So once we do that, the next step is injection. So we take all of that information. Along with that, we actually apply a set of our own prompts in order to simplify the customer's experience or user experience. You saw, for example, a number of commands there, right? Uh, in terms of shorten, elaborate. Uh, so we feed all of that as prompts behind the scenes so that the user just has to click a set of buttons to actually uh, make use of some of these capabilities. And then we also have fine-tuned a set of model parameters that we feed in to the model so that every single user doesn't have to uh, go deal with these model parameters, uh, such as temperature, uh, for example. Right? So that's all uh, pre-populated here. Uh, and then once we do that, we actually leverage both chat bison and text bison. Right? So both the Palm 2 models, depending on the, the experience that a customer is going for in our platform, we leverage both of those to serve a response. Once a response is generated, the other thing we do is we run another set of filters to make sure that there's nothing in the response that is off limits. Right? So once all of this is done, we serve the responses back to the user. So that's what you saw in the video uh, here in just a bit. And then lastly, I want to spend a little bit of time uh, telling you about why are we excited about some of the announcements that uh, Lewis and Polong just made here. Uh, you, you saw the demo on SEC documents. Right? So these large token sizes, this is going to be a game changer for us. It greatly simplifies the ability to process large documents in a single step. We don't have to chunk documents. We avoid that step uh, entirely. Uh, tuning. Tuning is a big deal for us. Right? It's not just for us to make our models more responsive, uh, you know, not just in terms of performance, but if you think about it in the form of uh, building an ecosystem with our partners, this becomes a very important capability for us to have, to have uh, multiple people participate in our ecosystem to extend some of our foundation, not, not just foundation models, but also the extensions that we could build for uh, them. Uh, multilingual, multi-region, this is also a big deal for us. Uh, this helps us take generative AI not just from North America, but we can now serve this capability to our customers in EMEA and in APAC as well. 
And then lastly, batch prediction, right? So if you have to run scheduled tasks, repetitive tasks, say for example, you're writing a narrative summary on your audit testing every so often, right? Well, we could batch process a lot of that. So when you come in the morning, you have a ready narrative of what's going on with your control test, for example. So those are just some of the reasons why we are super excited about the new announcements in, uh, in Palm 2. With that, uh, if uh, you would like to learn more about our approach to generative AI, check out workiva.com uh, slash generative AI. I'm going to be here in the room right after the presentation. Feel free to come by. Uh, happy to answer any questions that you might have. With that, I will pass it over to Adam. Adam, come on over. Them. Hello. Hello, everyone. My microphone is working. Okay. Hey, everybody. One more demo. We'll get you out of here on time. Uh, my name is Adam Smith. I work at Jasper. We are the AI co-pilot for marketers. Um, Jasper's been in the market for about two and a half years now, uh, using LLMs to show value to our customers. Um, we've got a broad customer base of digital natives, enterprise, agencies, uh, and we're continuing to invest in a growing engineering team. Uh, to maintain our leadership in this space. Our customers see value in creating content with increased velocity uh, and more output. Campaigns that used to take four to six weeks, they're now seeing they're accomplishing in one to two weeks or uh, achieving three times the output in the same amount of time. These are the types of value metrics that we live in every day. So how does Jasper work? Um, Jasper is a SaaS application it runs only on Google Cloud and uses the best of, of Vertex AI. Um, the patent pending Jasper AI engine, it, it really optimizes AI output quality for each use case, combining personalization and memory features, uh, as well as integrations to ground in Google search results, um, enhance with SEO tools, and more. Uh, the Jasper AI engine also does model fitting at scale for each use case from a variety of language models um, language and image foundation models, including uh, the latest Palm 2 Text Bison. We call these personalization features Jasper Brand Voice. Uh, a non-technical user can teach Jasper their brand's unique tone and style, uh, their style guide, and any factual knowledge about their business. Things like product brief PDFs or press releases or even just URLs for Jasper to scrape. All this data is yours, and we never use any of it to train third-party models. So let me just show you a demo here. Jasper demo is much more fun. Um, play along with me as I talk over my recorded demo. I got nervous with the Wi-Fi vibe here, and so I just recorded it, but I'm going to talk over it live. All right. So um, in this case, I'm going to be a digital marketer for a fictitious company, again, called Altostrat. And I want to create some assets for an upcoming campaign. But before I do that, I'm going to go to this brand voice section. Um, in this section, I've set my corporate tone of voice. We're a shoe company, Altostrat Kicks. So we want to be cool and trendy and relatable to the younger generation using slang and emojis and memes. Um, so I'll save this, and I can use it throughout Jasper. And I also want to upload some knowledge here. So I can just click on Knowledge, and I'm going to upload a, a campaign brief that really is the two, three-page summary of this launch of our coolest, newest sneaker yet. Um, so once we have that done, let's go over, and we're going to start a campaign. So I'm going to call this campaign Altostrat Kicks. I'm going to select the campaign voice that we just set up there. Um, and I'm going to upload uh, this, this same product brief as the context. So once we have all that done, um, we're just going to go ahead and select what assets that we want to create. So uh, a blog post, some Google ads, and my various social assets here uh, so we can get to the kids. So we're just going to click Generate Campaign. And Jasper's going to output all these assets in a shared campaign folder where my team can continue to collaborate. Uh, but let's drill into one of these. Uh, we'll drill into the blog post in the editor. And you know, there's always the need for the human touch here in all content creation. So I'm going to review this. Uh, I like the output here. The pump is back and better than ever. Let's pump up your game. 
even a cheesy disclaimer at the end there, while the kicks may provide an unexpected boost, actual dunking results may vary. But, you know, I'm gonna ask Jasper just to rewrite this closing paragraph with a better call to action. So we'll type a better CTA in the closing paragraph. No, you know, I, I don't like that one. Let's, let's just do one more. So we're gonna try again. Okay, let, let's choose to replace this as our new CTA. Um, we'll just fix the formatting here and um, move on. So I can always open Jasper Chat on the left here as a, as a research tool. Um, Jasper Chat is grounded in, in Google search results. So I can use it for research. I can ask Jasper in this case, what made Reebok pumps so popular in the 80s? And I can either enhance that prompt there, with, which is a nice little trick to, to write a better prompt, but we're just gonna send it here. And you'll see that Jasper will cite sources in the output that are from uh, Google search results. Anything that I, that I pull up in chat here, I can pop over to the document. So let's just do that here as a frame of reference. Okay, um, now I wanna create some product descriptions for my website. For that, I'm gonna go to create content and the product descriptions template. So Jasper have a variety of out of the box templates here that really obfuscate the need for prompting. Uh, so here in this product description template, I've got my product name. I've got that PDF that we uploaded earlier just by sort of calling the at sign and adding it in there. And I have my tone of voice that we made. So I'm gonna set my target audience to teenagers and we're gonna ask to generate. On the right-hand side here, we're gonna get three results. So Jasper loves giving you multiple outputs for A-B testing. And we'll save these in a doc for the web team to pick which one they like the best and, and use downstream. All of this I've shown you, this interface and app, are, these are built for marketers to be able to easily use generative AI. Uh, but you can have Jasper output at scale as well. So for the devs in the room, um, we're gonna show you uh, BigQuery integration. So we have a full AltoStrat shoe catalog here, over 500 SKUs in eight different languages. And we're gonna use Jasper to write product descriptions for all of them in, in one shot. So the first thing we're gonna do here is, is create a remote function that's gonna be associated with a cloud function that talks to Jasper's API. And then we'll just select the product name and the gender and the product type from our data set. And we're gonna ask Jasper to write a bunch of product descriptions for us. You'll see the output in the table below, um, right back into BigQuery. So this is perfect for our web team to take it in scale. Hope you found some value in this. I hope you wanna run to your marketing team and bring some joy into their lives or use the Jasper API to integrate it into your own applications. And with that, I'm gonna pass back to Lewis. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Adam. Thank you, Gautam, for being with us today to show some great demo. We really appreciate everybody here to join the session. Generative AI is evolving at a lightning speed. So Google has years of experience and expertise in this space. But at the same time, there are also things that are new to us. So we're grateful for customers, partners, and the all developer communities to grow with us and innovate with us. Together, we're making something extraordinary. I hope you find this session helpful Thank you all for coming. I have a great rest of the next. Thank you.